Sometimes in the midst of crafter's block, inspiration comes literally out of nowhere. And four and a half hours later, you're uploading a video to YouTube. Hey everyone, Wylock here. Thanks for joining me. Quick little kit bash here today. It sort of came on in a fever pitch, but uh, I'm really happy with how it came out. So I let the cameras roll, and here's how I made it. And remember that our sponsor is Heroes Horde for you 3D printers out there. Excellent selection, including all True Tiles lines. Okay, here we go. 20 minute scratch build. Got some costume jewelry and beads and leftover Warhammer bits. Uh, I got some wood products, so jumbo popsicle sticks, coffee stirs. Let's just see what we can put together. Oh, and these beads have lasted me for like several years. Also, I'll be using super glue and super glue accelerant for the most part. First, I got these weapons from a custodes kit. They're left over, and I'm just going to trim away the parts that make it look like a gun, that make it look sci-fi. Just leave the parts that are like filigreed and fantasy looking. Brought over a miniature just to help me with scale and I kept it next to me throughout the project. It's helpful to just sort of see how tall I'm gonna make the chair so that it looks relatively in scale. So here we go, I'm gonna take those two bayonets and super glue them to the side of this backing and I'm gonna apply the accelerant. This is a spray bottle, it's not intended to be used in the way that I'm using it, but I find that spraying wastes a lot and just by capillary action, you can use that tube to drop on droplets of the accelerant, so. Excellent product, love it, it's probably gonna last me forever. And here's just some leftover filigree from I think the Gothic Buildings episode from a couple years ago. Just super glue that on there. And then for the backing I decided to switch to chipboard because I don't have any like wood products this big. I used hot glue to attach it. That hot glue will sort of seep down and help create this gap. So I'm just gonna stick that on there and sort of hold it while it hardens and cools. And the idea is that now there's a channel at the bottom into which hot glue can seep for the next step, which is to cut the actual seat part. So I do want it to be able to fit a miniature, you know, if the king or the ruler is actually sitting on the throne. So I used it to gauge how big I should make it, cut it out, and hot glued the back onto it. Now for the armrests, I just have this thin wooden dowel. Uh, it might be a, a barbecue stick, I'm not sure. But I chopped it at a slight angle so that it's going to hit the back correctly. And then I have this. This is the muzzle to a Chaos Marines weapon. Uh, anyway, it's sort of like a lion head or something. So I super glued that on again with uh, accelerant. Healthy dab of it. Yeah, there we go. And shazam. Go, no, go ahead. Oh, I'm thinking about something. Nope. Okay, go ahead. There we go. Good. Nice strong instant bond. And then I used tweezers and attached it onto the chair. The legs are just four beads from a random bead collection that have sort of an all elongated shape and glyphs carved into them. Whatever. And I used a little bit of hot glue on the inside corner there, like the part that no one will see, just to give it some extra strength because these will be prone to breaking. Kind of smooth it out with your finger. You can do that with hot glue once it's partially cooled. It won't hurt you. Yeah, nice. And I rounded out the back, just another jumbo popsicle stick and a coffee stirrer, just to sort of plate this out, give it some depth. I, I don't know, I didn't think too much about it. By the way, I'm doing this video without a script for the first time ever, so this is hard. Anyway, after that, it's outside for primer. I like Rust-Oleum, and I'm gonna use a flat gray primer. Krylon makes good stuff too, but here it is all primed up. First, I'm going to base the wood with my usual burnt umber. Actually, I'm using my normal approach. So it's a solid base coat with burnt umber. But then I thought, eh, I want to add as much interest as possible. So I took this hole punch and just sort of punched out those half circles from the side. And I also trimmed the corners on the back to reveal more of those bayonet filigree parts. Just so if you're looking at it from the back, there's a little more to see. I don't know. Uh, a learning for me on this is abnormal shapes, non-rectangles are more interesting to look at. So anyway, the wood gets dry brushed with terracotta, and this does dry pretty muted, so I've learned to go heavy with it. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Dry brushing and dry brushing and dry, whoops. Dry brushing away. And I like to use it to bring out the edges there. Makes a nice sort of aged, almost burnt sort of look. And then honey brown over top that. 
And that chipboard, some of those slabs in there aren't wood, they're chipboard, but the fibrous texture of the chipboard does a lot for us to, uh, to create dry brushable detail. It's already baked in. Now I'm going to mask off those bayonets and we're going to get to airbrushing. I'm going to use Vallejo paints. Love them. I find that they have excellent coverage and the airbrush just as fine too. So this is the same recipe I use for my power swords in my Space Marines army. So first it's a base coat with white. Spritz that on. Nice solid coat. There we go. And then the next color is turquoise. And this is just the top two thirds or so. So you can see I leave the bottom white. Then I'm gonna move on to the ultramarine blue. And this is just the top third or so. So we got a real cool looking gradient going there, but contrast is what makes it pop. So I go to a very dark blue. This is stormy blue and it's subtle, but it does matter. Yeah, there you go. A nice blue glow, kind of a, I don't know, an elven look. And then all the filigree on the piece gets gold. This is glorious gold. And again, two thin coats is the way to go. And then Army Painter Soft Tone, or any sort of brownish or sepia wash, whatever. It, it's all fine. So I give that a nice wash, let it settle in, bring out that detail. Uh, in my opinion, Army Painter makes the best washes. That's not a sponsored statement or anything. Yeah, beautiful. Ugh, oh, love it. This is where I have to fill time saying something. I have to say more things. I hope the clip changes. There we go. All right, I'm on a dry brush with a polished gold. I forgot to film it, but it's just a lighter gold than I used earlier. And again, this is subtle, but it does, the, the overall effect is very noticeable once you get it on and you look at the piece from far away in aggregate. Now I'm gonna cut the pads out. So this is a padded chair. I uh, just sort of did some measurements and cut this out. And then I did a solid base coat with blue. It's navy blue. Yep. Solid coat. Yep. And then a dry brush with this blue harbor color once it was totally dry. And again, the fibrous nature of the chipboard doing a lot of the work for me. Go in two directions and this kind of, I don't know, it adds interest. It, it makes it look like felt, maybe? I don't know. It doesn't matter. The point is, it's not just a slab of solid color. And then I'm going to glue that on. I used super glue instead of hot glue because I want no gap there and I want a little bit of working time. So I slap that down and then the backing as well is done the same way. And then it's not a Wylock project without some random gems that are tastelessly put on. So I just use some white glue, Elmer's, with a toothpick to apply it and stick those on there. Yeah. Now let's check this thing out. So I am really happy with how this came out. The whole thing took me like, I don't know, an hour and it sort of came out of nowhere. I was just looking for something to do and I got down my bits and started kit bashing and Man, this was really fun. Kind of felt old school, back to like the days when I first was introduced to this hobby. Also, if you're not familiar with 40K, it is a super gratifying feeling to get your money's worth out of your leftover bits, because those kits are freaking expensive. Key learning here for myself, not using 90 degree angles, doing something other than 90 degree angles goes a long way to making things look more interesting. Here it is with a miniature in the chair. This is a Duragar miniature that I 3D printed. I think it's from Fat Dragon Games, but uh, you can see the miniature fits on there. That's a standard one inch base. And yeah, nice. Now, if this idea of crafting for your tabletop games is new to you, you should know that I'm not alone. Find us on Facebook, the Tabletop Crafters Guild, 33,000 members strong and growing. If you like this particular video today, here's two more that I think you'll enjoy. And until I see you next time, I'm Wylock, make things and play games.